so this is uh, lecture 15 okay and the last thing we saw in the previous uh, lecture was decoding bch codes okay so i didn't really go through the entire process but uh, i gave you a feeling for why using this notion of error locators you can convert the decoding problem into solving a set of equations in f2 param right so how do you efficiently solve those those equations is uh, becomes the decoding problem and we saw an example where eventually at the end of the day we had a quadratic equation for which we had to find the solution by brute force by searching through all the elements of f16 right that was the last example that we saw okay so we'll now generalize and move on to reed solomon codes and we'll see the decoder for reed solomon codes in some more detail okay not in full detail but some more detail okay so this lecture is going to be about reed solomon codes okay so the way i am introducing it you're you're all going to go away thinking that reed solomon codes are a generalization of bch codes there are so many other way, ways of teaching it which will which will look which will look at reed solomon codes in a completely different way okay so the way i am doing it is to show you the connection between reed solomon codes and bch codes there are other ways of doing it as well okay so it's a very small modification at the end of the day if you look at it okay so how did we define bch codes we defined a parity check matrix and then we said all binary code words that satisfy h times c transpose is zero for each solomon codes you simply drop the binary requirement that's all say all vectors over f2 power m which satisfy h time c transpose is zero when you go back and work your proof for the minimum distance you'll see the proof really didn't require anything about the binary vectors the same thing will work with non-zero entries in uh, non-binary okay so this is the first time we're going to look at non-binary codes okay or codes over f2 power m okay so far we have seen binary code binary codes always but we have had parity check matrix over f2 power m but we still had only binary code words now we are going to have codes over f2 power m okay but this should not surprise you at all okay so how did we define a linear code what was the linear code at the end of the day when we looked at the vector space description what did the linear code become it's the subspace it's the subspace of the of some vector space right so far when we looked at binary codes what were binary codes binary codes one can think of as a subspace of this f2 n okay so some the length n binary code is a subspace of f2 f2 n okay n dimensional binary vector space okay so what will be a code over f2 power m okay it's a very simple extension there's another way of calling it you can also call it a 2 to the m array code 2 power m array code okay that's another way of saying it okay that's a very simple extension you simply say it's a subspace of what f2 power m n okay so it will be a length n uh, code okay so your basis vectors your generator matrix your parity check matrix all of them will now have entries over f2 power m okay and you'll have to do all your linear algebra over f2 power m that's all other than that every other result will carry over without without any major modification okay so for instance i can talk about a n k d code okay i have to talk something about distance i'll come to it over f2 power m okay what are its various parameters this would be a k dimensional <coughs> subspace of of what f2 power m n okay the n dimensional binary uh, not n dimensional 2 to the m array vector space okay n dimensional n dimensional vector space over f2 power m okay <coughs> okay so so how would an arbitrary code word look some code word if you have code word c how will it look Well, I don't want to say alpha. I'll say C C zero, C one, so on till C n minus one, and all these C i's will come from what? F two param. Okay, it's an n-dimensional vector over F two param. 
okay each of these guys as he pointed out it is some alpha power of alpha where alpha is the primitive <coughs> primitive element of f2 param or they could be zero okay so let's say this zero zero also belongs to that okay so you see all that is possible zero or some power of alpha some zero one alpha alpha part and whatever you know when I mean, all those things can show up here okay so the first question is what will i do with such a code Okay, what will I do with all these alphas? I can't transmit alpha on the, on a link, right? I have to ultimately transmit only bits. Okay, what will I do with these alphas? What's the connection? Okay, so everybody knows the answer, right? So it's a very simple thing. Okay, so every alpha power, whatever you know, you know, it can be represented as m bits. Okay, so each thing is only m bits. I know I have a vector notation, so I will only transmit those m bits. Okay, so when I think of this code word in practice, how many bits will this contain? m times n okay so it this has a m times n bit notation representation in practice okay so you should keep that in mind okay so when i say a length n code length n binary code i know my block length is n okay i'll have to transmit n bits but when i say a length n code over say G or F256 over F256, it's actually 8 times n bits, okay, or n bytes, okay. So the size becomes so much larger, okay, it increases by m, okay. So it's several times very common to repress to call each of these CIs as symbols just to distinguish them, okay. I'm going to come to it, come to it, please, please be patient, okay. I'm going to come to it, okay. So each of these CIs just to distinguish. I would refer to them as symbols, symbols over F2 par M. Okay, don't confuse them with QAM symbols and PAM symbols and all. That's a modulation question. Okay, that's far removed from where we are. Okay, so when I say symbol over GF2 par M or F2 par M, what do I mean? Some element of F2 par M. Okay, so just to just to refer to it as something, each of these things are called symbols. Sir, in practice, uh, why can't we see these as uh, like why should we go back to bits? You want to do multi-level type thing. Yeah, if you want, you can do that also. But usually, it's done by going back to bits. Okay, you can do it. So, you have to see it as bits at some point because today, every com all communication is binary. No? So somebody will only give you a bunch of bits and ask you to transmit. He won't ask you to transmit a bunch of levels. Okay, so, you have to go back and forth. Okay. So, this is how you think of an arbitrary code word. This is k-dimensional subspace. Okay. So, how many vectors do I need to describe my code completely? I need k basis vectors, right? Okay, I can arrange them in a generator matrix. Okay, so if you think if you think of a generator matrix, okay, G, this would be what? This would be a k by n matrix, and the rows G1 to GK, okay, these would all be vectors, is form a basis. Okay, basis for for the code. Okay, so I can form a generator matrix. Likewise, I can have a basis for the dual. Okay, how do I define the dual now? Again, I'll, I'll need a dot product. No, the dot product also is defined the same way. How will I take dot product of 2, x and y in f2 par m? Simply summation x i y i. Okay, so that's the same thing. There's no difference. Okay, so all these things same null space definition all these things will call, follow from linear algebra nothing will nothing will change so i can define a parity check matrix also okay and the rank nullity will also be true so rank plus null nullity will be equal to n and you can you can define a lot of things okay so all these things are true for any field i don't have to worry about proving all this once again so my parity check matrix h would be what n minus k by n Okay, and uh, if you want to think of the rows as h1 to hn minus k, okay, so h1 to hn minus k will form a basis for what? For the dual. Okay, all these things will nicely carry over. There's no problem. Okay, so like he asked, the crucial, the one mi minor difference is minimum distance. What is distance? Okay. So in the binary case, how did we define distance? What is the Hamming distance between two binary vectors? 
number of places in which they differ. Can I and can I use the exact same definition for vectors over f2 power m? I can use the exact same definition. The number of places in which they differ. Okay, there is no change in the definition. That's the definition for having for the distance that I'm going to use. Okay, there are other distances more complicated, but this is the simplest distance that we can use. Okay, so the Hamming distance, number of symbols, number of places in the vector, okay, number of symbols. Okay, so if I have two vectors x and y in F2 in the n dimensional subspace, the Hamming distance, I'll define it as a Hamming distance between x and y, okay, is number of places in which they differ, number of positions. In which they differ. Irrespective of how they differ. Okay, if you take there, for instance, if you take the m bit representation of each symbol, they might differ in one bit or all m bits, but still it's counted as only one. Okay, number of symbols in which they differ. Okay, so the number of bits, now how they differ as symbols is irrelevant to me. Okay, so we might say alpha and alpha square in some way are closer than alpha and alpha power whatever 120, but I don't care. Both of them are different. That's my that's my definition. Okay, as I said, there are other metrics which are more complicated, but we don't care about that in this course at least. Okay, okay. So so what about Hamming weight? Okay number of non zero positions okay again that's the same definition okay and immediately the same relationship between having weight and having distance will follow okay the having distance between x and y will be the same as the having weight of x minus y x minus y or x plus y in f2 power okay that will also follow okay the same relationship Okay, it should be actually x minus y in the characteristic 2 case, I can happily write it as x plus y like we did for the binary case. Okay, okay so that is the notion of distance now and based on this now you can see how the d and k d will come, come through. Okay, so the minimum distance of a code how will you define now? It is the same definition. Okay, so you can define it in uh, two different ways. The proper way of defining it is what? Distance is the minimum number of places in which any two different code words differ. Okay, so you can do the same derivation since it is a linear code you can show it will be the minimum weight of a non-zero code. Okay, both of those will come. Okay, so this d will be minimum number of places in which two different code words differ. Okay, this you can show is the same as minimum weight of a non-zero code. Okay, and then you can use the parity check and say what? Minimum number of linearly dependent columns of H. Okay, all those things will will follow. Now notice in the binary case we could say minimum number of columns that add to 0. In this case you have to be more careful. You have to say minimum number of linearly dependent columns of H. Okay, so all these three characterizations for D, the minimum distance of the code continue to hold even in codes over F2 power M. There is no problem there. Okay. Is that clear? Okay, so even syndrome decoding will hold. Okay, for instance, you can extend all those things. Okay, so you can do minimum distance decoding, right? Given a received, what is given a received vector, I can look for the closest code word. I can do all that. Okay, everything will extend. There's no reason why all those things should not extend. Okay, so once I have a distance like this, everything will work. Okay, just that you'll have more code words to worry about. Okay, so how many code words will I have in an NK code over F2 par M? Okay, you will have 2 power m raised to the power k. Okay, it is not 2 power k. Okay, so, you see this becomes 2 power 
m k okay so you have much larger number of uh, code words to worry about okay so each each message symbol okay now we sort of think of message as k symbols over f2 par m and not k bits alone okay which is actually m times k bits right so 2 par mk makes sense okay so you get that you have a lot more code words okay so if i take one received word okay if i take one received word okay how many words are there a distance one away from it okay in the binary case it was exactly n right you, you can change any one here will it be n Okay, yeah, so it see n will only tell you which symbol in which it differs, in which place in which it differs and then for each place you have how many choices? You can differ in 2 power m minus 1 ways. Okay, it can't be exactly 2 power m because one of them will be 0, <laughs> don't differ in that. Okay, so it will be actually n times 2 power m minus 1. So all your bounds will change slightly, the singleton bound will not change but your Hamming bound and your gilbert washmore bound will change slightly. Okay, so those things will change. Okay, so there's no time to go through that in great detail here. But if you see it in a book, you'll see those factors will show up. You remember the Hamming bound and all that picture, the geometry picture was based on number of vectors that are a distance one away, a distance two away. Okay, all those things will change. Okay, there'll be these additional factors that are carrying over. The singleton bound continues to hold. Okay, so that's one thing which continues to hold. Remember, how did we come up with the singleton bound? Do you remember the argument? Okay, the argument I gave was <coughs> write down all the code words one below the other and look at k minus 1 positions. There should be at least one overlap, which means <coughs> maximum distance can be n minus k plus 1. The same thing will carry over. So you can show d is less than or equal to n minus k plus 1. Okay, this continues to hold. The other bounds will differ slightly. I am not going to write down how they how they work out. Okay. All right. So now let's come back to Reed Solomon codes. What did I say are Reed Solomon codes? They are codes defined over F2 par M. Okay, so it's parity check matrix and generator matrix, all of them will contain elements from F2 par M. It's a code over F2 par M. Okay. So I'm gonna give it give the parity check matrix for a T error correcting Reed Solomon code. Okay, so what about error correction now? All those things we have to define carefully. If D is 2T plus 1, I'm gonna say it's T error correcting. The same thing holds, okay. Okay, so let me define the other way. Okay, so the error correcting capability is defined as follows. T is B minus 1 by 2. It's the error correcting capability. Remember, is it, is this is, what is this? Is this the number of bits or the symbols? Okay, but will it also be the number of bits? Error correcting capability. Sorry. Will it also be the number of bits? And I think about it. Okay, I'll come back and comment on it later. But this is a this is an issue that is worth thinking about. What is the actual error correcting capability for a code over F2 param when I define minimum distance like this? Okay. So T is D minus 1 by 2 is an error is the error correcting capability? Yeah, you're right. It's in terms of symbols. If there are so many symbol errors, I should still be able to recover. But there could be exactly so many bit errors and you, you would get so many symbol errors also, right? So ultimately when we think about it in action, you'll see how it works out. Okay, I'll come back and draw that picture, but I want to define the Reed-Solomon code before I write down how I'm doing it, okay? Let's 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 define the Reed-Solomon code. Okay, finally we're ready for the definition. A T error correcting Reed-Solomon code Code with length n equals two power m minus one is defined by the parity check matrix that we've been using all along. Okay, the standard BCH parity check matrix. Okay, let me write that down once again. 
1 alpha alpha squared so until alpha bar n minus 1 1 alpha squared alpha square squared so until alpha square raised to the power n minus 1 all the way down to 1 alpha bar 2t alpha bar 2t squared so until alpha bar 2t to the power n minus 1 okay okay so i should be very careful here an important addition over f2 power m sorry apologize for that okay it's an important thing over f2 power m what is alpha alpha belonging to f2 power m is a primitive element So what's the most important difference between Reed Solomon and BCH code? The code, code words can have entries from F2 par M while in BCH codes we define pretty much the same parity check matrix but we said the code words will have to be binary. Okay. Okay. What? So, so once I let this, let this assumption go of binary, I'm saying code words can be from F2 par M, right? Right. They'll, you have to worry about a couple of things okay so first thing is the block length is given to you in the code n n is 2 power m minus 1 that's very clear okay you immediately worry about the two other things okay minimum distance and dimension okay minimum distance i'm saying it's t error correcting which means i'm saying the minimum distance is greater than or equal to 2t plus 1 i know for the bch codes that was true will it be true if i relax the assumption of letting non-binary code words this is the question Okay, I want you to go back and look at the proof, the way it was written down. You will see essentially what did we use finally. If you had a code word of error or code word of weight W, what should happen? There should be W columns, right? There should be a sub matrix which would have rank less than W, right? That's all. That's the only criteria. Okay, so the linear independence is the only thing. There's no nothing else I've used. Okay, so the bound and the proof based on the Vandermond matrix will carry over without any major modification. Okay, so it will work out exactly the same. So you can easily show by the same proof. Okay, same proof as for the BCH case. The minimum distance will be greater than or equal to 2t plus 1. Okay, so that's the first thing. And the next thing you worry about is dimension. Okay, so again, what was the trick we used for dimension in the BCH case? What was the trick we used? The minimal polynomial, right? And before that, basically we view the, viewed the code words as polynomials. Once you view it as a polynomial, we saw all that was required was alpha is the root of the polynomial, alpha square is the root of the polynomial. So until alpha part 2t is the root of the polynomial. The difficulty we had there was these code words have only binary coefficients. We couldn't enforce this. We needed minimal polynomials. Here what will happen? We don't care what the coefficient of the polynomial is. It's, it's okay. If it's f2 param, it's f2 param. I don't care. So, in fact, describing the code words will be much easier in this situation. Right? How will it work? Let me see. Yeah. So, ultimately that will happen. See, you can say if C is a code word, C0, C1, Cn minus 1 is a code word. If C is a code word, okay, start by thinking of C of x as C0 plus C1x exactly as before, okay, C2x squared plus so on till Cn minus 1, x bar n minus 1, okay. In fact, we, we have a much easier situation than the BCH case, okay. So this will happen, then what will happen? C of alpha is 0, C of alpha square is 0, so until C of alpha per 2t is 0. This, may, this means what? x plus alpha divides C of x. This means what? x plus alpha square divides C of x, so until x plus alpha per 2t divides c of x is that clear from here to go to the generator polynomial we had to do lcms of 
minimal polynomials in the binary case because we wanted the code word also to be, also to be binary. Now we don't care about those things. So what, what's the only thing? Just the product of all these things. Because you know there is no common factor here. None of these things will divide the other. Right? They are all irreducible. Very easy to see the degree 1. So obviously the generator polynomial. Okay, so let me not immediately jump to the generator polynomial. Obviously, c of x is a code word. If and only if, okay, it goes both ways. Okay, c of x equals m of x times what? x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared, so on till x plus alpha power 2t. Okay, so you mark out this polynomial and call it the generator polynomial. So the generator polynomial is much easier in the reed solomon case. Because I don't care about c of x having coefficients from f2 power m. Okay, so I will go through multiply and then take any m of x I want. So what is the degree of g of x? 2t. Okay, and the degree of c of x at most can be n minus 1. So what is the maximum degree possible for m of x? n minus 2t minus 1 which means the dimension k is n minus 2t. Okay, so this degree is less than or equal to n minus 1. So this implies this degree here is less than or equal to n minus 2t minus 1. Okay, so that implies my k equals n minus 2t. Okay, is that clear? Okay. All right. So now, from the BCH bound, we had d greater than or equal to 2t plus 1. Now that I know k equals n minus 2t, what does my singleton bound tell me? Do the computation. Okay, if you use the singleton bound, you will see d will be less than or equal to 2t plus 1. So, you have in one case d being greater than or equal to 2t plus 1. Another bound is telling you d is less than or equal to 2t plus 1. So, what is the only way? d has to be equal to 2t plus 1. Okay, so, using singleton bound, and bch bounds, you will get d equals 2t plus 1. So, in fact, my t error correcting RS code over t error correcting RS code is going to be what? Over f2 power m is going to be 2 power m minus 1, right? 2 power m minus 2t minus 1, right? and 2t plus 1. Okay, I gave a name for codes that will satisfy the singleton bound with equality. What was the name? MDS, right? Maximum distance separable. Okay, so you see easily these satisfy the singleton bound. So this becomes an MDS code. These are MDS codes. One of the famous, most famous examples of MDS codes. <laughs> okay, maybe. All right. So, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Correct? No, n minus 2t. K is n minus 2t. Do you want me to write it as 2 power m minus 1 minus 2t? It's the same. What's the question? I'm a little bit confused. This is n, no? This is n. I'm sorry. If this is not clear. This is n. This is n minus 2t. That's d. Okay, I just wrote the 2t before. <laughs> it's a little bit confusing. Maybe it's not clear on the screen. 
okay so these are the one of the famous examples of mds codes okay so the next thing is to look at examples okay so the first example we'll start with we'll do i'll take rs codes over f4 okay they are the simplest codes okay so we'll see it's not too many of them out there but we can at least start with this so that we get used to the idea and then we'll see how it works out okay so what is my n going to be 3 okay suppose i say t equals 1 then what's g of x Okay, I need alpha now. I'll take alpha belonging to f4 primitive so that alpha power 3 is 1 and alpha square is 1 plus alpha. What's g of x for t equals 1, n equals 3? x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared. Okay, go ahead and simplify it. What do you get? x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so what's k? k also is very easy, no? n minus 2t, which is 1. You don't have to do the calculation. You don't need g also. You can immediately know k is 1. And what's d? d is equal to 3. Okay. So I want you to write down the code words. What is the code itself? Okay. Your m of x will have degree what? 0, right? So it will be only, it will only be a constant. So, how many possible values will you have? 0, 1, alpha and alpha square. There are four different possibilities. So, you multiply g of x with 0. What do you get? 0, which will be 0, 0, 0. Then multiply it with 1. You will get 1, 1, 1. Multiply with alpha. What will you get? Alpha, alpha, alpha. Then multiply with alpha square. What do you get? Alpha square, alpha square. Right, those are my four code words. Okay, it's a three one three code. Any two code words differ in three places, right? Okay, do you see how I got this? Do you see how I got each of these things? Is it clear? Just multiply with m of x. Okay, m of x is just m zero. There's nothing more to it. Put different values there, you'll get different code words. Okay, is that clear? Okay, when you use it actually in a, in binary, okay, suppose you were to think of this as using it in binary, okay, how will it look? Okay, supposing I say I can only transmit bits, I can't transmit alpha and alpha squared. What how would it how will it look? You just gave me an idea, no? You have to replace each element with its vector equivalent. What's the vector equivalent now? 0, 1, alpha, alpha square. What is the vector equivalent? 0, 0. 0, 1, okay, maybe I put alpha here, I put 1 here, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, okay. So, in binary, this becomes what? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This becomes what? In binary, okay, this is binary equivalent. Binary expansion, we'll call it binary expansion, okay. That's a expansion or image. It's called binary expansion or image, okay. 0, then 1 becomes what? Yeah, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Then alpha becomes 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Then alpha square becomes 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So if you notice this, even the binary the binary expansion will in fact be a binary linear code. Okay. You add any two code words here, you will get another code word. Okay. What is its block length? The binary expansion, what is the block length? 6. What is its dimension? 2, right? 2. Binary expansion is 2. 2 times 1. It's very easy to see that. Okay, 2 times 1. And then what about minimum distance? Continues to remain as 3. Okay, it doesn't become 3 times 2. Okay. Continues to remain 3. Okay, is that clear? What about error correcting capability now? It's supposed to be one symbol. Any one symbol error I can correct. Okay, but notice when I actually transmit in terms of bits. This one symbol error I can I can induce with just one bit error. I don't need two bit errors to induce a symbol error, right? 
just go to one symbol and introduce one bit error i'll get a symbol error finished i'm done so even though i can correct one symbol error which sounds like a major <coughs> achievement in fact i can only correct one bit error okay but there are several two bit errors which can be corrected right as long as the two bit errors are fixed in one symbol i can correct what if it is spread over two other symbol i can't correct okay so only one way one symbol error one bit error is correctable two bit errors are not correctable okay so that's the that's the interplay here so one needs to think about that okay i'm sorry yeah if, we, if it's within the same symbol you can correct more than one bit error but if it but if you want to look at error correcting capability how did we define error correcting capability all error vectors of that weight should be correctable so you can't say 2 is the error correcting capability because there are error vectors of weight 2 which are not correctable even in binary okay so that's the way you define it okay so that's the simplest case okay what do you think will happen if i put t equals 2 okay it doesn't make any sense okay so 2t becomes 4 and then you'll get alpha part 4 you can't do that with f4 okay so t equals 1 is the only reasonable case in f4 okay so let's move to the next example which is f8 okay okay and i want to use alpha belonging to f8 with alpha plus 7 1 and alpha plus 3 is 1 plus alpha okay you might you might have to do some minor arithmetic here suppose if i say t equals 1 what will happen g of x is going to be x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared okay and k is going to be well n is going to be 7 right that i knew already okay k is going to be 7 minus 2 which is 5 okay so this will be a 7 5 3 code okay okay do you think i should make an effort to list out all the code words how many code words will i have I think your instinct is always to say 2 power 5, but remember this is a code over f8, okay? It's 8 power 5, okay? 2 power 15, okay? So it just goes off to a huge number, okay? So 32,000, okay? I can't I can't write down all the code words, but what do I know among those 32,000 code words? Any two code words will differ at least in one symbol, okay? One symbol, okay? Okay? So now if I do a binary expansion here, what will happen? Okay, my block length will become 21, right? I have, I have a symbol. I have seven symbols in the code word. Each symbol will be replaced with three bits. So, seven times three, it will become 21. My dimension will also become five times three, okay, 15. Okay, one might say it requires proof, but not too bad to it's not too difficult to prove this you can easily argue also why it should be 15 why how many different just now I, I told you right there are 200 2 part 15 different code words so obviously it will be a dimension 15 okay and unfortunately the minimum distance you can only say is greater than or equal to 3 and in fact in most cases it will be equal to 3 this is a reasonably in, at least in the reed solomon codes the way i have constructed it it's a pretty good bound also okay so 21 15 3 only okay you don't get that much here when you go to the binary image okay so this is how you would actually use it in practice but when you think of it you can think of it as a 753 code over f8 f2 part okay okay if you want you can simplify the g of x and look at some code words just to get some just to get the hang of how the code words would look okay so it's possible to do all these things you can do t equals 2 Okay, g of x would be what? x plus alpha, x plus alpha squared, x plus alpha power 3 and x plus alpha power 4. Okay, and then this would be a, okay, I don't want to go through the simple calculation, 7, 3, 5, code. Okay. Again, how many code words does this have? 8 power 3, which is like, what is 8 power 3? 2 power 9, 512. Okay. So 512 is still a large number, but any two of them differ in five places. If you want, you can think of the binary expansion. It will be a 21, 9, 
again five code in most cases it will be five okay right think more about the error correcting capability and make sure you understand that distinction you can correct errors in two symbols okay but you can induce those two symbol errors with just two bit errors which means you can you are only guaranteed to correct two bit errors okay yes yeah 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 here yeah so her question is a very valid question i was hoping somebody will ask this question why do i have to go to some f8 and do some fancy read solomon construction and give you just a 2115 greater than or equal to 3 code i know how to construct a 2115 3 code i hope all of you do right in fact you can construct a 21 16 3 code can you not right right using the simple uh, construction that we've been doing what's the big deal okay the big deal comes not at f8 okay if you go to f256 okay suppose i go to f256 okay that will be my third example n is what let's 255 i'll take alpha belonging to f256 being primitive suppose i say t equals 16 i want 16 error correcting capability okay so what will be my g of x x plus alpha power so on till x plus alpha power 32 so what is this code now 255 223 33 code okay go ahead and do a binary expansion what will you get okay i want you to try this this is not too difficult you know multiply by what 8 255 times 8 is 2040 what is 223 times 8 19 19 it can't be that high 1 1784 okay and let's let's just accept 33 i i don't care you know i mean maybe it can be larger than 33 i'll just say i'll accept 33 when i think this is very tough okay constructing a code of such large block lengths in binary being able to correct 16 errors and guaranteeing Uh, 33 okay again another point where you should be amazed at what you have learned now you know how to construct how many binary vectors of length 2040 2 power 1784 and what can you guarantee any two of these vectors will definitely differ in at least no 33 places okay you can correct 16 errors okay so it's that's the power not only that you can describe every every code word in this how how do you describe each code word in this you don't need a huge 1784 by 2040 matrix what do you need in fact you don't even need that size matrix you only need a 32 by 255 matrix over f256 look at the amazing way in which it has come down okay it is you only need f256 you don't need f2048 or something you need only f256 okay and you only need a 32 by 255 Okay, so those things are great simplification when it comes to simplifications when it comes to implementation and understanding. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to comment about it as the closing remark for this class is brought it up. You can do the exact same systematic decoding as we did for BCH codes. What is the systematic decoding idea? Instead of associating m of x with m of x times g of x, <laughs> you take m of x, multiply by x bar n minus k, divide by g of x. Good. The, the same division with remainder follows. so you can do systematic encoding also so in fact if you go to most people in industry the way they would think of reed solomon codes is as follows okay so i'll i'll simply write it down here i say systematic encoding extends okay you go and talk to most people in uh, industry see they would always think of reed solomon codes over f256 right This is a standard in the industry. Nobody uses anything other than F two fifty six. Pretty much, in most most places they use that. They would say, "Give me a message M, okay? Give me a message M, okay? And suppose I want to correct T errors, okay? My message M can be some k bytes, okay? I love to add how many parity bytes? Two T parity bytes." 
this is my message and I want to correct T errors this will be 2T bytes of parity okay so this is what they would talk about as a Reed Solomon Reed Solomon code this is what it allows you to do give me k bytes I will give you for if I want to correct 8 errors I will have to add how many bytes of parity 16 bytes of parity and do it how do you actually do it I mean you would know how to do it right represent this as m of x multiply by x bar n minus k which is x bar 2t right n minus k is 2t x bar n minus x bar 2t then divide by g of x which you know from f256 and take the remainder the coefficients of the remainder are your 16 or that those are your 2t parity bytes you would know that okay so there's a relationship between I mean you might be worried about the relationship between k and 255 right now you're thinking of k as what 255 minus 2t right but I can always shorten okay so I can always shorten I know if I have an nk d code I can always get a n minus s comma k minus s comma same t same d code uh, greater than or equal to d but same d code is possible okay in this case it will become exactly d, okay so you can shorten so this k can be any number less than 255 you don't care so in fact if you look at the early cd standards this k will be something like 28 32 okay because that's the only thing that they could handle that's the length they could handle okay? so it's a very small number but you can think of it this way okay so this is how people think of Reed solomon codes usually okay so this is uh, where we'll stop with the introduction I, I want you to i want you to do this if you want to really understand take some non-trivial example try to construct some code words i think matlab has Reed solomon encoders decoders built into it if you have the communications toolbox for instance okay so you can go play around with it try to generate messages try to generate code words see how it looks okay in fact Reed solomon codes are also cyclic you shift them you should get another one the same property will carry over okay so rs codes are cyclic as well Okay, all these things are yeah so you can see all those things the same proof as bch i mean just is the multiplication by alpha type things but all these things will nicely follow through okay so i wanted to get some experience with looking at these r reed solomon codes it's tough for me to do a code word over f256 okay so i can't do it in paper here okay i want you to get some experience okay what we'll see in the next class is decoder for the reed solomon code you see you'll get a similar framework like the like the bch code except that there will be some complication okay remember now we are able to correct symbol errors okay when you correct Reed Solomon codes it's not enough to find the position of the symbol where the error is right what else do I have to find the bits within the symbol which were in error also okay so it it will it'll, it'll require one more level of complexity you see it's possible we can have a nice algorithm for doing that okay that's what we'll see in the last next class